Sleep is regulated by two processes. Process C is driven by our circadian rhythm and it's largely regulated by two key hormones, melatonin and cortisol. Melatonin is produced the closer we get to bedtime and it's what tells us to go to sleep. Cortisol, on the other hand, starts to build up over the nighttime and it spikes when we wake up in the morning and that's what gets us out of bed. Production of these hormones changes over our lifetime. So during puberty, for example, our melatonin decreases. As we get older, there are even more fluctuations. Cortisol production tends to ramp up as we age, and this is associated with a decline in sleep quality and less REM sleep at the end of our sleep cycle. And in women who tend to report more sleep disruption than men, as we get older and are approaching menopause, the hormone that tells us to release our mature eggs can increase. And this is correlated with poorer sleep quality. It's not just that hormones regulate and affect our sleep, it's also that how we sleep affects our hormones. We see the effects of this dysfunction the most in our waistline. In one study, researchers restricted the sleep of participants to four hours a night for just four consecutive nights. In men, they observed a rise in the appetite-stimulating hormone ghrelin. And in women, they saw a fall in the hormone that makes you feel full, GLP-1. It left them wanting to eat more. So chronic sleep loss and circadian rhythm disruption have definitely been associated with things like an increased risk of diabetes and obesity. The good news is that at least some of this relationship between sleep and hormones can be improved.